Hi, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to think about um, if we were doing your coursework, what practical that you would um, carry out for it. Okay, so I asked you the other day what one you would consider doing and most of you said solar. Bailey, you said solar and wind or if it was just one you'll do wind. So I'll try and talk about both here. So the very first thing you need to do is to say like what practical you're going to carry out, so solar or wind. But not just that, you need to say like specifically what factor that could affect the power that you're generating from that, um, that you're going to investigate. So um, let me have a wee think and I will um, write some ideas down here, okay? So here's what I need you to do. I need you to write, so type this up or um, if you want to handwrite it for now and then type up after, doesn't matter. I think you lot just like going straight onto the computer though. So um, say what you're investigating and why. So that would be the first thing that you would say. Um, so in pink, I've written things that you might want to do if it's solar and then in the greeny blue color, I've written what you might want to do if it's wind. So um, remember what you're investigating, you always have to relate back to the actual problem from the coursework. So you need to make that like really, really clear. So the first thing um, that I thought of is, now you don't have to do any of these, you might have something else you want to do, like the angle of the sun. Um, and by sun, I mean the light that you would be shining down in your um, practical. And that's going to represent different seasons. So like in the winter where the sun is low and then in the summer whenever the sun is high and then everywhere in between. Um, the light intensities, so like changing the voltage of the power supply that's providing your wee bulb to represent the light. Um, that's also going to represent different seasons, um, but it could also be used to represent cloud cover. So if you look at that wee table that they give you about stuff like that, you'll know if that's something that is good to investigate. Um, the angle of the solar panel so if they were to be positioned on the roof of the building then that might be at a particular angle or there's land isn't there available so if it was in there then you could have the choice to position the solar panels as you wanted again any others maybe i've just this is literally just off the top of my head so there will be stuff i've missed um for the if you're doing wind things that you might want to investigate would be the wind speed um so just I know whenever we did it we just had those wee hair dryers and we could only do like a couple of speeds um, but pretend that we have something because if you were doing this for real then we could look we could get something for you um, but pretend that you would have something that me would mean you could provide a variety of um, speeds of air being fired at that wee turbine so the angle of the blades the pitch angle and uh, the length of the blades um, on your turbine because what I was thinking with that is if you have this set amount of land that you could that you have available to you for putting these wind turbines in then the length of the blades is going to affect how many of those that you could fit onto that land or just the number of blades there's bound to be stuff i've missed because um my brain's not working very well so that was the first thing that um you, i want you to write about the next wee thing then is the factors that you're going to control and by that i mean the things you're going to keep the same in your practical um, which has to be everything apart from this what you're going to vary so that can just be one thing um, and that will be related to what you've decided on up here so like for example if you were going to vary the angle that the sun was shining down on your solar panel and um, then that would be the thing here and you would keep everything else the same for your practical so you would keep you would use the same wee solar panel you would use the same um like intensity of the sun um you would keep the same I can't think of anything else but everything else would be the same um, apart from that one thing that you're changing and then say what you're going to measure oh i'll maybe just remind you how you can calculate um power so do you remember p equals iv so i is the current and v is the voltage so i'll draw a wee diagram here right <laughs> please don't uh, judge me on this but so say you had your wee solar panel you would be like shining your light down on this and then uh, using an ammeter and that's going to measure the current so i and then you would also use a voltmeter so you would replace that ammeter then with a voltmeter um, and that's going to give you the voltage and then you'll multiply the two of those together to get the power same thing with the wind turbine so i just drew the ammeter on one and the voltmeter on the other but um like you would change them in and out okay um right let me see what else okay the next thing then is a method and an apparatus diagram so 
something a wee bit uh, better than that but um, try and show what it is that you're um, like that you're going to set up so if it is a solar panel let's say it's a solar panel and you're going to vary the the, the angle that the light is hitting it at so if you have your solar panel here and it could be angled as long as it's consistent the whole way through then um, you're going to have your light here 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 and here you're going to keep everything else the same and um, you're going to measure the power output from the solar panel so you would just draw a diagram showing how you would set that up and think about the practicality so show a protractor measuring the angle show it maybe having your light sitting on a, a bit of wood that is angled and that that is how you're measuring the angle um, if it is the like you're varying the light intensity we have a wee light meter that you can use to measure the intensity of the light that's falling on it so you, you would include that um, and then your method um step by step now don't just write it and then move on with your life and forget about it write a method okay and then it's <laughs> gonna sound silly but like follow it and imagine yourself um like following the steps and if you do that you'll probably find there's something that you've forgotten to say i do that all the time like every single time i do a method in physics um well not every single time a lot of the time i will say to the class don't write this down yet because i always forget something and then we have to add it in and everyone cracks up with me so um yeah write it out follow it through and you'll maybe find you've forgotten to say something obvious like turn the power pack on or um set up the bulb here do you know what i mean so a step-by-step -step numbered method so one two three okay etc um and then your wee diagram and label everything on your diagram okay the rest of it then is like what we do with our results but you're obviously not going to have results so i reckon if we do that now and i'll give you a couple of lessons um to do this but if you work on that for the next wee while and then um, I can have a wee nosy at it and then we'll see where we're at then. Okay, I think that was me. Nice to see you. Okay, bye.